Hey everyone, so now is the time to start working with MongoDB, right? So as you have already seen uh, all the core concepts of Express, so now it's the time to work with real-time databases. So this is basically the homepage of MongoDB. So uh, basically mongodb.com and slash home, right? You can go to this particular uh, URL and you will be uh, redirected to this page, right? So now what we have to do is this video will be about installing MongoDB on your system, right? So see, there are two versions of MongoDB, right? So uh, basically you can use mongodb in two ways so basically you can use it in the cloud right so for that we use a tool called mongodb atlas right and then we can also use this in our local system and uh, that will be doing in this particular course right so uh, what we'll be doing is uh, if you go over here to try free right so this will actually redirect you to mongodb atlas right so you can go over there you can create your account and you can use atlas right atlas and compass are pretty much the same thing right it's just that mongodb atlas will work on the cloud right so basically we need to uh, work with mongodb on our system so what you have to do is you have to go to uh, the solutions page right oh uh, sorry the products page right here you see uh, the products option and now from here you can go to community server right you see community server so you just have to go to community server and now you see that this is the community server edition of mongodb so you just have to go uh, over here right and uh, the version is uh, this particular current version platform is windows package msi right so uh, for your system specification this uh, may be different if you're working on a mac or if you are working on a linux system right so you can select your particular version over here and you can straight away download so as you download this, you will see that one set of wizard will download and it will take some time. So uh, I'll basically come back when it has uh, uh, basically completed downloading and then we'll install MongoDB on our system. So now as you can see that it has uh, uh, done downloading. So I'll just open this. So this is the set of wizard, right? And you can just click on next and I accept. You just need to accept this and now it says that uh, we need to choose setup time so i'll just say complete right and uh, then we can basically say next and yes so here you can see that it will uh, say that install mongodb compass so you just have to uh, tick mark this because we need compass right so we'll just install this now and uh, let it install so it will take a while to install and uh, as soon as it gets installed so let's see what uh, uh, what all we are going to do with this right uh, so now basically it has installed and here you see that uh, welcome to compass so we have downloaded compass also so this is basically compass so for now i'll just close this and i'll uh, tell you that how you can use compass uh, later right so now uh, we uh, need to set up something right so let's go and uh, set up mongodb in our system so now what you want to do is you will be going to uh, this pc and here i'll just go to c drive in my program files and here i'll just find mongodb Right. it should have been installed over here so this is mongodb and inside mongodb you have to go to server and then you have to go to this particular version and now you can see you can go to bin right and inside this bin you will see uh, this mongod option right here, uh, right here right so this is uh, basically the application that we'll be using to run mongodb right but uh, now what we need to do is first we are going to configure mongodb in our system right so here of this folder right you just need to take the path so this is the path and you just have to copy this particular path that is c program files mongodb server 6.0 slash bin right so we have to just copy this and we have to set this in our environment variables so to basically uh, see your environment variables you can just go to advanced system settings right so you just have to go to this option you just have, just have to type advanced system settings and after going to advanced system uh, settings you have to go to environment variables and inside this you need to go to system variables and inside the system variables you will find this particular option that is of path so you can basically click over here and uh, inside uh, any of this you can just press edit and uh, in edit what you can do is you can just come over here and you can paste your this particular path that is mongodb server 6.0 bin that we just copied right and now you can just save this all right so now we have set uh, this particular path as our environment variable and now we are ready to use mongodb in our command prompt so what you have to do right now you just have to open cmd and now you just have to type so now you just have to run this particular command that is mongod 
right so as soon as you will uh, run uh, mongodb so you will see uh, this uh, type of uh, data over here right so you see uh, everything uh, that uh, is related to right so this is basically uh, some uh, data uh, that is coming from that particular command which is a uh, completely uh, random data right so basically you do not need to focus on any of uh, this particular data that has generated over here but you have to find this particular line so if you see that it says non existent path data directory c double slash data slash db not found right so it is not able to find this particular path and by default when you use mongodb this is the path where mongodb will store its data right so we have to create this particular path so to cre uh, to create this particular path we just have to run this particular command that is make directory right uh, i hope you are familiar with this command so it uh, basically goes like md right which stands for make directory and we have to specify uh, the uh, the root where uh, this uh, directory will exist so we'll have to create c uh, basically this particular command right so you can go over here and you can check for this right so uh, where it is right here so uh, we have to create uh, the path at c data db right so it, it will be this name so c uh, underscore c, uh, c uh, colon uh, slash data and now db right so by this name we have to create the path this uh, the syntax of the command is incorrect so basically i was doing a very uh, silly mistake over here i was using forward slash but we have to use backslash right so what i will do is i'll just create that that folder again with backslash i'll say data backslash db right and now you see that uh, the system cannot find uh, the specific path okay uh, md right md c and uh, uh, backslash data backslash db right so now you see that this particular path has been created and then again i can run uh, mongo d this particular command and now you see again uh, this data will be generated but now we won't be uh, finding any error message over here that uh, this particular directory hasn't been found and now you can see over here if you go uh, down and let me just uh, uh, maximize this a little bit so now you can see uh, this uh, should be uh, somewhere here that it is waiting for connections right so here you can see that it is waiting for connections so this is actually proving over here that now your mongodb is ready to make connections with your application and uh, now we are ready to uh, go to compass and let's understand uh, how can we use compass to uh, basically use mongodb right so uh, let me just close this command prompt the work is done over here right and uh, these are all the commands that uh, you have to basically uh, keep in your mind when you are uh, uh, setting up mongodb right so let's just close this and what i will do is i'll just open compass now so here you see that uh, uh, mongodb compass uh, shortcut uh, is created over here so i'll just open this and after opening this uh, you do not have to set anything over here you just uh, keep this as it is right so mongodb local host uh, let uh, it be this host only don't change this and you can just uh, click on connect right so as you will connect you will see uh, some random uh, collections over here that says admin config and local right so here is one admin here is config and here is local right so uh, now these are uh, the default uh, uh, files the default folders that you are given so uh, and uh, basically uh, this makes sure that okay we are able to connect to database right now so we are able to use uh, this particular uh, compass right now to use mongodb right so now we'll understand that how can we actually connect our own application with uh, the compass right so let's uh, do that so i'll just go to vs code and inside this vs code what i will do is right so i'll just close this file from here and i'll just create one folder so i'll just say this will be a complete new project right so what i will do is i'll just say for and mongoose or let's say mongodb right and inside this we'll be uh, discussing all about uh, how to use mongodb right and let's uh, go and let's basically open this with integrated terminal i'll stop this particular server for now and here i'll just say first thing first right so we have to install one thing that is uh, known as mongoose so if i talk about uh, mongoose so mongoose is a tool that gives us an api to basically work with mongodb in our application so what it does is it actually makes a bridge between uh, your, uh, mongodb and your express application so that you can uh, easily connect your application to mongodb and you can work along with that right so uh, if you want to know more about mongoose you can basically uh, head on to 
mongoos and you will see uh, this basically odm mongoose odm and here you can read about mongoose so basically it says writing mongodb validation casting business logic boilerplate right everything you can do uh, with this particular package and uh, you can basically use this with your express application and you can connect your uh, mongodb database as well so it will basically make your work very smooth right that will be looking uh, uh, in the code so uh, just what you can do is you just have to install mongoose for now so i'll just say npm install and i'll just uh, type mongoose over here so this will take a little time right this is a very uh, short packet so it should not take uh, more than uh, five ten seconds but uh, let it install and i'll come back so now as you can see that uh, mongoose has been installed so what we will be doing is we'll go to this mongodb folder and we'll just uh, open a new file and i'll just uh, name this as index.js right and from this index.js file we'll be creating uh, one database of ours and uh, we'll be connecting that database to mongodb right so let's do that so for this i will just have to import uh, uh, basically i have to import uh, mongoose right so what i will do is i'll just say const uh, mongoose equal to require mongoose right so uh, basically this is how i can uh, import uh, mongoose and then we have this method that uh, mongoose uh, provides us that is basically mongoose.connect right so this connect method will actually help you to connect your database right so now inside this connect you can just uh, pass uh, your uh, string right your uh, url basically over here so what i will do is i'll just pass mongodb so this is what you have to pass over here you have to pass mongodb then you have to uh, add one uh, colon over here then you have to add double slash you can say a local host right and after this local host you can just uh, press one slash and you can add any name that you uh, want your database to be right to have basically so now you can say that i'll just add test database over here so uh, uh, that's like that so i'll just say test database and then to basically make sure that it has connected or not this is basically a promisified uh, method right so it takes one then statement so as the promise is fulfilled so you can just say that okay so as the promise has been fulfilled we can just say console.log that connection is successful or if it is not so what we'll do is we can have a catch statement which will catch one error right which will catch one error and we can just uh, say that uh, console.log or we should uh, basically uh, say this is this console log error and here we can say that could not connect to the database or could not connect to mongodb couldn't connect to mongodb and for the specific error we can pass the error object over here right so this is how we can do this and now let's just try and run this application and let's see that if we are able to connect to mongodb with uh, this uh, few lines of code or not so what i will do is i'll just open this with indicated terminal i'll just say node mon or just node index.js right so as soon as i do this so uh, basically it says that deprecation warning mongoose the strict query option is switched back to false and okay so basically this error is coming because sometimes mongodb actually fails to uh, get this uh, local host word right so what we have to use is instead of using local host we have to use the local host's default address and that default address is uh, basically this right so it is basically uh, 127.0.0.1 right so now as i have put the address now you see that uh, the connection is successful message is here right so basically this was it for this particular video where we actually installed mongodb we actually uh, understood how to configure mongodb right and uh, we can uh, how to uh, we learned how to actually set up mongodb with uh, our express application right so uh, we'll be doing a lot more stuff in the upcoming videos so see you soon hey so now as we have already discussed about how you can install mongodb how you can install mongoose and you can connect your application to your mongodb database right to your uh, compass basically so now is the time to actually go forward and see how can you create your database how can you put some data into your database right so for that we need to first understand what is a schema
right so this will be the first step uh, of working with databases right so uh, we have to first understand what is a schema and how you can create your schema right so what is a schema so whenever you are storing data uh, whenever you are storing data into a database right there is a pattern in which you store a database right and that pattern is actually known as a schema right so see uh, let me take you to uh, scalar topics first right so what i will do is i'll just take you to scalar topics and i will just want to show you something right so if you see if i go into courses and now you can see there are a lot of courses but every course has different data right so if i open this particular course you see the course name is sql versus no sql there is uh, the course creator's name there is uh, the uh, uh, designation of that creator and now you see that there are all all of these data are different right and uh, if you go into another course you will find the data is different right so how is all these data being managed so they are being managed by a database right so uh, in this way you are going to store so uh, this is one course and there must be uh, a name for this particular course there must be a name for this particular creator right similarly for all the all the courses right so this is how we have to store data but if you see that this is a template right this is a template and we have just copied this template and we have changed the data over here. So similarly, when we talk about schema, so if I take you to schema, so you see this is a very uh, simple schema example. If I take you to this particular article and just to show you this particular image, right? So you see they're creating a rock band schema. So what will happen is there is a schema of band name, number of album, first two date, lead singer, guitarist or all of that, right? So whenever we are trying to create one band, right? We just have to put some names in this particular keys. And then we have to ask our schema that, hey, based on this particular schema, create one uh, data set for us, right? And that will create one data set for a particular band. Similarly, we can create for multiple bands as we are creating for multiple courses over here, right? So if you're not understanding this, let's go to code and I'll make you understand it very clearly. So here we are. And now let's just try to create one schema, right? So uh, you see that uh, in this particular thing, you, you see that we can create a new mongoose schema and we can basically have a key value pair, right? But when we talk about key value pair, we just have to name one key. And for the value here, we just have to name that which uh, kind of uh, value we are expecting this key to have, right? So this is how we create a schema. So let's do that for uh, courses only, right? So we were talking about courses, so let's talk about courses. So what I will do is I'll just create one course. So I'll just say course schema over here, like that, course uh, schema, right? And to create the schema, what we need to do is we need to use uh, the new method, right? So basically new mongoose, right? So uh, mongoose dot, and here we just have to uh, specify schema, right? This is an object and inside this we can create one object and uh, here we will actually creating a schema. So imagine a course, right? What all properties can a course have, right? So as we saw, the course can have a name. So we'll just say name. So we want a course which has a name and the name will be in string, right? So we specified string. Then we have creator. So we'll just say creator and inside this creator we will just say that this will also be in string the creator's name right then we can have date property so we'll just say date so the date uh, the property basically means that uh, whenever uh, the uh, course will be published so i'll just say published date right and here uh, what we need to do is we uh, don't need to actually uh, hard code this date so whenever a new course will publish we just uh, need uh, that it takes the current days or a current days date, right? So for that, we have a method that we can use over here. It's a generally uh, object, right? That is your date object. So uh, what we can do is we can first, we have to specify the type. So whenever there is a need to uh, specify two or more properties in a particular uh, key, right? Inside your schema, you can always use uh, this object uh, uh, syntax, right? And here you can uh, actually enter your type. So first we'll enter type, which is basically here the types are string. So here the type will be date in capitals, right? So this is uh, how uh, uh, date can be specified. So this will be a date. And now what we can set is we can set the default uh, value over here to basically date dot now. Right? So this will basically have uh, date dot now and date dot now will pick up the current date, right? And then we can uh, set something as published 
or we can say is published right let's keep this a boolean value is published and let's just set this to boolean right so if the course will be published we'll have a true value if the course is not published we'll have a false value over here right so something like that so i've just created uh, this particular course schema with this four properties name creator publish date and is published you know you can have a lot more properties if you want but for now it's uh, it is enough right so let's just move on and see that how the schema will work but right now we won't be able to make this schema work why because we do not have a model now what is a model so to understand model uh, you must uh, know some uh, oops concept right so basically when you talk about uh, oops right in uh, in oops what you have if you know even about classes and objects that will be enough to understand this right so in oops what we have we have classes and we have objects right so what happens is if i have a class called car if i have a class called car and if i say i have a bmw over here right so basically this is my class and this is my object right an instance of a class is object similarly if you talk about uh, the schema so treat your schema as a class right and for these classes we can have multiple models which will work on this particular schema so to create a model what we can do is so as suppose that this is a course schema right so there can be multiple courses and for those multiple courses also we can give uh, many values right so uh, to do that what we can do is we just have to create a model and how can you create a model let's see that so just have to write uh, we are creating a model right so what i will do is i'll just write model dot mongoose sorry mongoose dot model right mongoose dot model so from mongoose we are creating a model and inside this model what you need to do is you need to specify two things what will be the name so i'll just say the name will be course just a simple name course and on what basically this will be based on sorry about that on what basically this course uh, model will be based on so this model will be based on this particular schema so you have to specify the schema's name over here right so i'll just specify course and then i'll just say course schema right and now what we can do is we can basically take that in a variable take this into a variable so i'll just say const course right so this particular const course right is based on this particular model and this particular schema now what i can do is i can create some data set for this particular course so how we can do that we can just say const let's create a course right uh, notice that uh, this is in uh, uh, capital letter the first word is in uh, the first letter is in capital and the, the first uh, and, this, uh, and uh, for this particular variable the first letter is in small right so uh, basically this is specifying that this is basically your blueprint or you should say this is basically your class right and by uh, according to this particular thing you are creating this course right i hope it uh, it is clear for you if it is not you will uh, see the actual data when it gets uh, stored in the database and then i'll uh, make you understand that from where uh, all of this is coming right so just have a little patience all right so const course and inside this course now we can actually specify a new course right so now you understand that this is a blueprint and according to this blueprint we are going to create our first course right and for this we just have to again uh, create one object over here inside this and now we can actually create a course so what our schema expects course schema remember this course that we can create will be respected to this schema right so now let's say we create a name so we just pass uh, javascript right and uh, let's pass creator and i'll just say let me just uh, take my name over here i'll just say published date so we do not have to uh, take published date because it will be taken automatically so it's okay that if we don't uh, put it over here as well right and we can just uh, put is published to true like that so this is how we basically created this particular data set over here so now as we are done with creating our schema and creating our model and then we are uh, we have also created a first course right so what we can do now right now is we want to save this data into our database so for that you have a method that uh, basically is course.save 
right so uh, whatever you are creating whatever you are creating over here let me just remove this for you right so whatever you are creating over here you just have to take this particular name right uh, where your course has been created and for uh, that particular variable name you can call this save method right and uh, this is basically an asynchronous method so you'll just have to put await over here right so await course dot save and we can basically save this into another variable that is uh, let's say result right so await course dot save and now what i will do is i'll just take uh, all of this code let me just also console log this let's console log result and we'll just see that uh, what mongodb has generated for us or if it has saved this particular uh, data in the database or not right so what i will do is i'll just create one uh, function over here i'll say function create course and inside this function i'll just put all of this uh, code so that course material will be course will be created here it will get uh, saved and uh, we'll just uh, console log the result right and you will also have to make this function async right so that your await can work async await right if you're not familiar with async await you can check out my javascript course all right so uh, async await and uh, now we can just create we can call create course right so uh, why this particular course dot save or basically i should say this save method is asynchronous right because see whenever we are trying to save some data we can actually accessing our local system right your moment db compass is sitting in your local system it is not actually in uh, uh, this environment right so it will actually access that and to access that uh, basically a lot of time uh, basically more time will be needed right so uh, for that particular reason they created this as an asynchronous operation right so that uh, other work of your uh, particular project will not stop right so uh, now you have basically this thing now we can just call this create course and now we can just uh, run our server and see that if this particular course based on this particular model which is based on this particular schema has been created or not right so let's check that out so now what you can do is you can go to index.js and here what i will do i'll just say node index dot Yes, I'll just run this particular file, right? And yeah, so now we can see that uh, this is uh, basically the result that you are getting, right? So the name of the course is JavaScript. Uh, creator, is, uh, I am the creator, is published through an IDC. This is what I want to show you that whenever you are creating any data, whenever you are creating uh, any uh, thing uh, for MongoDB, right? So that particular data set will always have this particular ID. Right, which will be unique to uh, this particular uh, uh, object or data set uh, only. Right, so this is a unique uh, set. Right, and now you see that publish date. So publish date is basically the current date. Right, which is today. Right, it is 16 uh, December today. Right, so this is your publish date, and you have this uh, version here. So you can just ignore it. Uh, ignore it. Right, it's not of uh, basically. Not uh, we are not going to use that but uh, right now. So now you see that JavaScript and uh, all of this is here. So now we can go to Compass and see if this has been there or not, right? If this uh, this particular data set is there or not, this collection is there or not inside our courses collection, right? So let me just uh, open up this and let me just refresh this once. So I'll just uh, open Compass once again, right? So let's open this and now let's connect and now we see that we have a database called as test database which is basically our database if you see we created a test database over here right so this database has been created and inside this database we have this courses collection right so if you see we have this courses collection over here so as you see that we created our course course schema and course model so that collection is over there, courses collection. And if I open this, so you will see our first entry over here, right? That is basically with your unique ID, name JavaScript, creator is published and published date, right? So this is how we, we uh, basically uh, added uh, one data set, one uh, uh, data over here, right? And similarly, what you can do is you can add more data, right? So let's go check and let's see if we can add some more data or not, right? So what I'll do is I'll just uh, name the course as Java and I'll just uh, name some uh, creator as ABC and I'll just say is published to false, right? Let's change some data now 
and now what we'll do we'll just call this method again so we'll just go to index.js and uh, we will just uh, call this but uh, we'll just run this file again so that the uh, so that the create course will be called again right so let's see that and now you have uh, another data set with you right with name java creator abc and is published and now let's go to compass and let's refresh this right so you can basically uh, click on this particular button which will refresh the documents and now you see another entry has been pushed over here that says java abc false right this is all so this is how basically you can create your schema you can create your models and after doing that you can basically create some data for your database right so this is a courses collection we have this uh, for our courses right now so this is our first course and this is our second course similarly you can create such more courses right so now as we know that how can you create data for your database let me tell you the data you are creating over here right this collection or this data set is actually known as a document right so if i say javascript if i say the first course document that is this particular document if i say uh, the java course one so this is your second document right so it's like that so we'll be calling this data sets as documents from now right so let's uh, see that how can we actually query these documents right so what will happen is right uh, see you have this javascript course you have this java course but now what if you need this javascript course only what if you need this uh, java course only or what if you need uh, the course that is created by me only right so how can you do this so you can basically use some uh, querying techniques that are available in uh, mongodb so, uh, with mongoose so i'll just uh, show you that right so let's see that how we can do that so what I will do right now is I will just uh, create one more uh, function over here that will also be async and I'll just say this function uh, the name of this function is uh, get courses right something like that and inside this particular function what I will say async function sorry uh, we'll have to add the function keyword and now let's just replace this call from uh, get courses and from inside this uh, particular function we have to uh, basically write this function now uh, let's write this function and let's try to uh, get a specific course right so how can we do that so first of all we have to get all of the courses first and then we can get some of the courses out of uh, all the collection right so to get all the collection what can we do is we can just say const courses equal to await course right so this is basically a course model and with respect to this particular model only every course has been created inside this particular model so now we can await this particular course and now we can use a dot right so if you see that we can basically use a lot of method over here right so basically we have to find or filter right so what i will do is i'll just write find over here so this method can be used over here right so uh, await has no effect on the type of this expression okay so maybe we can remove the await i don't know let's try it out so course.find and inside this find we have to basically specify on what basis we have to find this particular uh, courses right so what i will say is i'll just say that find the course where creator is me right something like that and then we can just say console.log courses so if you see in uh, our collection right we have two documents and one document is with uh, my name right so that this course is created by me and uh, other course is basically with some abc name so we should only get this particular document right now right so let's check this out that if we are able to uh, basically do this or not so i'll just remove this async over here as it says that async await is not needed over here so let's try it out so function get courses const courses course dot find and from the cre uh, from creator renal console console dot log course right so let's just run this uh, particular code once so i'll just open this i'll just close the previous code i'll just say unknown index dot js so now you see that there is an node index dot js mongoose options i think i'll have to use async await I don't know why it told that async await has no effect. So let's use async await, right? So async await goes out fine, creator, and now let's just run this, right? So let me just run this once again, index.js. 
all right so now you see that the course document that has been uh, created by this particular creator that is basically me has been returned to us right so this is how you can uh, basically uh, query your documents right not only this you can do a lot more stuff over here so basically what if you have some complex query right so we basically were, were able to use this find method and get uh, the courses of, of with my name but what if we just need some of the data from that document we do not need all of the data right we just need uh, so basically we just need the course name so how can we do that so what we can basically do over here is we can use a method called as select right so there is a select method over here so as we have used this find method just a second what has happened yeah so now as we see that course.find and after this find what we can do is we can say select right and inside this select we can basically pass a specific uh, term that we are looking for so you can just use this uh, object syntax and you can just pass name and you can just uh, uh, pass one over here right so one will stand for true that okay we need this particular data over here right and rest of the other data will be neglected right so let's run this and see that if you are getting only the course name or not right now right so let me just close uh, this thing right now and let's run node index.js and now you see we are getting only the id and we are getting only the name right now that the name is javascript right similarly if you want something else so if you want uh, published date so you can just say uh, you can just put a comma over here you can just say published published date so here it is your published date and uh, let's just set this to one as well and now when you will run this you will see let's run this once again so now you will see the name and the published date right so this is how you can also use the select method also with select method you have more method right you can uh, use a sort method over here so sort method is basically used to uh, when you want to uh, sort something in ascending or descending order right so you can just say that if you want to sort some names right so you can just pass in the name property and you can add one over here right so the names will be sorted in ascending order if you want uh, basically to uh, sort your names in descending order you can pass minus one and something like that right so you can read about all of these uh, methods uh, on the internet right on the express docs uh, basically on the mongodb docs so you will find all of these methods and you can basically try out uh, all of these methods and you can try out querying uh, your documents right now right so this is how you can actually query your document thank you for watching the video all right so now as we have talked about uh, how can we use uh, this find method and how can we uh, basically uh, uh, find a particular document with uh, using a key value pair and uh, what are all the uh, different methods that you can use like select sort and like that right so now basically what i want to uh, tell you about is are the comparison operators right so suppose that look here right so suppose that your course right whatever course you are creating have a rating key with them right have a rating uh, property with them right so any course can have ratings between 0 to 5 now what if you want courses that has a rating from 4 to 5 only right so you want the top uh, rated courses right or uh, if you want to uh, basically uh, fi want to find uh, the lowest rated courses from 0 to 1 right so how can you basically do all of this right how can you work in between a range right so that's what uh, basically we are looking uh, we are going to look in this particular lecture so for that if we are using basic javascript we can just use a if else statement we can just use greater than equal to symbol greater than uh, less than symbol right all of those symbols but when we are working with mongodb when we are passing our values uh, like this in uh, forms of objects we cannot basically uh, use the uh, greater than symbol or the less than symbol over here right so if you see that greater than 2 it will not show any error over here right so if i pass over here uh, any value right so if i pass uh, anything is a number or no, nothing is a number so let's just add one uh, numbers uh, form over here right so let me just make it uh, back like this right and i'll just add a rating uh, property in uh, this particular schema right so i'll just say rating and i'll say this should be in number right so i've added one rating property over here and uh, let's just pass rating and let's just uh, give this uh, mm, let's just give this 4.5 like that and a comma 
right so i basically passed rating for this course and now what i will do is i'll just go back to uh, compass i'll just uh, clear this database for now right so i'll just write test database right so i have cleared every data from now uh, every data from here and what i will doing is i'll be creating two uh, more documents with rating component over here right so let's uh, go and create that so i'll just uh, call the create course over here and i'll just uh, comment out the get course function right so let's create some courses so i'll quickly create three four courses with a rating component and then i'll come back all right so basically here uh, in uh, our database i have uh, basically taken three courses from our scalar topics and i have just created one random course over here which has a rating 3 and all the other uh, three courses have rating 4.5 4.2 4.3 that means uh, above 4 right so now what we want to do is we want to sort out these documents and we want only those courses which are rated uh, 4 and higher right so how can we do that so for that we have some comparison operators over here right so let me talk about those comparison operators so first what i will do is i'll just uh, comment out the create course function and i'll just get back to get courses function right so now what are these comparison operator so let me just write them for you right so basically you have eq which denotes equal right then you have uh basically uh, for greater than for less than right so basically you have a gt for greater than you have lt for less than or let's uh, cover a uh, gte first gte basically stands for greater than and equal to greater than and equal to right then you have lt and lte which will serve the same purpose lt and uh, lte right so lt stands for less than lte stands for less than equal to i hope it is understood and then we have two things that uh, is in and not in right so uh, basically in and not in are basically used to uh, basically uh, see uh, a particular uh, document in a particular range right so suppose that uh, we uh, want uh, all the courses which has rating 4 which has rating 5 and which has rating 3 right so we want only these courses so for that we can use uh, this in operator so it will basically uh, take out uh, those courses i will show you how to use this right but uh, i am sure that you are familiar with all of these terminologies equal to greater than and all of that so let's use one of these and let's check out how can we uh, use them as operators right so what i will do is i'll just go over here in uh, this find method and i'll just remove uh, this key for now because now we will be talking with uh, ratings right so now what i will do is i'll just say rating right so here let's see why do we need these operators right when we are talking about rating we can just uh, basically put one value over here right so i just put 4.5 now i cannot use uh, greater than or less than symbol over here so i'll have to use these operators so how can we use this operators we can use this as keys right we can use this as a uh, separate objects over here so how can we do that let's see that so uh, what i'll have to do is when i'm writing a rating i'll have to create one object over here inside this object i can pass dollar symbol and i can use gte right which stands for greater than equal to and here i can pass 4.5 like that right or let's pass 4 right so greater than equal to 4 in this particular uh, compare with 4 and whatever uh, rating whatever course which has rating over 4 we are going to get that right so now let's just see that if you are able to uh, run this code or not so i'll just go to index.js and i'll just go to node i'll just uh, clear this and i'll just run this again so i'll just say node index.js and now you see that we are only getting those courses which are rated 4 or higher right so we have these three courses c++ java and javascript so if you see over here c++ is rated 4.5 uh, java is rated 4.2 javascript is rated 4.3 and this particular random course which i created for ruby right it, it has rating 3 but it is not included in our output right so this is how basically you can use your comparison operators and also uh, we have used this greater than uh, equal to symbol you can go and you can uh, try out with equal less than less than equal right now you know the drill but i just want to show you one more interesting thing over here so in place of uh, greater than equal to 
let's use this in operator right so what is this in operator so when you use this in operator you have to specify specific values that you need right so suppose that i just need a course which has the value 4.2 or other courses which has value 4.2 right so i need that those specific courses only or i need courses which has value 3 only right so how can we pass it so basically in this particular operator you have to pass your values in an array so what you will do is you will just create one array let's pass 3 and let's pass 4.2 right like that so you will only get those courses which has these specific values in their rating property right so let's go and let's run this once again and let's see if we are able to get the output as we are expecting or not so now you see we have got only java and ruby right so this is how you can use your comparison operators when you're working with mongodb hey so in this video we will understand how can we update an existing document right so if we go to our compass you see that we have uh, three uh, four documents over here with different languages different creators and different ratings right so now what if what uh, so see we what are we doing over uh, with uh, this create course method we are basically creating one new course right so if i run this course one new course will be created right with uh, these values but what if we want to uh, basically update one existing course how can we do that right so for that what i will do is i'll just uh, go over here and i'll write a function right so let me just write a function i'll name this function as update course something like that and then this function should also be async because we'll be using uh, as uh, asynchronous uh, ways right and then what we have to do is basically now first we need to have that particular document with us right we need to know that what particular document to update right and for that what we can do is yes we can get that document with its id right so this particular uh, function will take an id and as we uh, will get an id what we'll do is we have to get that document with that id so what we can do uh, over here we can just say let course equal to and we can uh, go over to our uh, code right and we can just say await course dot find by id we can use this particular method and inside this we can just pass the id so now in this particular course variable right we'll have uh, the particular course that we're looking for right because we'll be passing that id over here right and now we just uh, need to uh, have a little check that if there is no course right so if uh, the id that we have passed is incorrect right or there uh, is no course that exists with this id we'll just return quietly right so we have done up till now and now what we can do so now we have the course now we just need to go inside the details of that course so if the course is actually the document is actually in form of object right so this will return an object if you will see whenever we are logging that particular data over here it is in form of objects so how can you update an object right you can just name that particular object and you can get the particular key from that object right so let's suppose that if we want to update uh, this particular course right and uh, we want basically uh, the creator's name right we want to change the creator's name and we want to change the uh, subject name uh, that means the course name so we'll ha have to address the name key and the creator key so what we can do is we can just say creator dot name uh, let's change this to some random name Steve and uh, then what we need to ch uh, change is we need to change the uh, sorry the name will be for course right so let's change this course to python for now and uh, then what we can do is <coughs> we can go over here and we can just say course dot uh, creator and we can change the creator's name to steve something like that and then again similarly we have to call the save method in this particular course so we'll just say course dot save and we'll just say await right and let's just uh, get this in a variable so i'll just say const updated course right so wait course dot save and let's console log the results we'll also be seeing the results in our mongo uh, i mean uh, the mongodb compass as well right so we just say updated course right and now we just need to call this function that is update course 
and here we just need to pass the id so let's go to compass let's pick up a courses id so let's say we want to change the first course so what we'll do is we'll just pick up this particular id and we can just copy this and we have to just pass it over here right so we just pass this id and this will be inside of a string right obviously because you see that uh, here it is in inside a string object id inside a string we have there so we have to copy the whole string right not only the number right now we can go back and we can basically run this code so i'll just comment this particular function from here we do not need to call this and let's try and let's uh, call this update course right so i just go to index.js i'll open this when they get integrated terminal and i'll just say node index.js and now you see async function update course okay did i forgot to add a wait somewhere was our team python updated course equal to await okay updated course sorry about that let's run this again i'll just say node index.js so now you see the course with this particular id has been updated with the creator and the course's name right so let's go back and let's uh, refresh our database and now you see the first course has been updated with python and steve right so this is how basically you can uh, update your uh, document by using methods right so what we actually saw over here is we saw basically how to create something right so we actually saw the create thing over here right then ratings and basically here we were actually reading the data right so we actually saw reading and now here we actually saw updating right this is for updating and now what we'll be looking at we'll be looking at deleting right so we are actually talking about all the crud operations that we can perform when we are using mongodb so now we'll be looking at how can you delete a document so now we'll be talking about how can you delete a particular document from your database right so let's talk about deleting so basically as you saw that when we are trying to update a course we just pass an id and we uh, find that course by id and we just want to and we just go and update whatever fields we need to update but while deleting we'll use the same process right same process nothing is different over here right so what we will do is we'll just create one function we'll say delete course something like that this will also take id right because uh, we need to specify what document we need to delete which particular document we need to delete right and now what we can do is we can just again uh, have our course over here we can just say that uh, course dot find but now find by id right here is find by id but now what you want to use you want to use this particular method that is basically your find id and remove right find id and remove and inside this find id and remove method what you will do is you will just pass the id that you will receive right and now you can just say that uh, uh, let course equal to course dot find by id and remove and we can just see our course right now that's it so console dot log course right and now we can call this function so i'll just call this delete course and in this delete course i'll just pass one id let's take the first one only right so i'll just copy this particular id from here that is not readable just give me some time right so i'll just say yeah so let's copy this right let's go back let's paste it over here and this should be inside a string so i'll just pass string over here and now i'll just uh, comment this particular code right now let's run this uh, delete course function so i'll just go to index.js i'll just say node and uh, index.js okay so there was an error so let me check okay so we didn't use uh, the await uh, keyword over here we just forgot to use that so that's why the error is there now it should work fine so i'll just say node index.js 
and now you basically see that this was the object that we were targeting and now if we go to our database and we refresh this so now you see that that particular course has been deleted from here so now you must be wondering that why we have used find by id and remove and why not find by id and delete so there is nothing like that you can always use find by id by uh, find by id and delete right so they both work uh, pretty similar right so uh, they will both do uh, the job for you that you need right so let's check that out as well so i'll just take this course i'll copy this right and i'll go and i'll paste this over here okay let's run this again okay object id failed for value Okay, maybe this is not the ID. This is not the correct ID. Let's give it another run. Index.js. All right, and now you see that Ruby Adam. Basically, I took this particular ID for the second time. So now, as we can go over here. So now we see that Ruby and Adam are here. But as we, as soon as we refresh it, we see that that particular code has also been deleted. Right. So these both method they work pretty similarly. You have nothing to worry about that. To why remove and why not delete and something like that. Right. So this was about how you can remove your documents from your database. Hey. So from this module, we are going to start with implementing validation in your application. Right. So how to do that? What is actually validation? So validation is basically the check of your data right so is your data validated or not see validation basically means that the data that you are providing is sufficient or not is correct or not right and if you have provided enough data or not right so for example let's see that if you uh, basically i uh, run this particular function now so what i will do is i'll just uh, uh, go over here and i'll just uh, comment this uh, call of a function and i'll call a create course function again right so this is basically create course. So let me just uh, wrap all these functions. Yeah, and we'll just uh, focus on create courses for now. Right? This particular function. So what will happen is if I run this particular course and I remove these three properties from here. So what will happen? So basically, one document will be created with just the course name Ruby, right? But what I have said over here is that I need these four data as well, right? If you can, if you will ignore this, then also we have three data over here: a creator's name, published, uh, published or not, or uh, the rating, right? We need these data also. But if we go and run this particular course, uh, basically create course function, we'll see that a document will get created with just the name property, and that will just say Ruby, right? So we are not validating the input that we are giving over here, right? So we have to validate it so that. Whatever data that is required, we should enter that data. And if the data is insufficient, right? So we should get an error message or an exception message, right? So let's see that. How can we do that? So we will be talking about validators now. So let's talk about the first validation that you always uh, that you should always do. That is basically adding the required keyword over here. And how to do that? Let's see that. So basically what can we do over here is we can remove this string and we can just open an object over here right and inside this object we need to specify the type so inside type we can write string as we did with the date property and now by giving a comma there is this required object or you can say this is a keyword right so uh, writing this required will uh, automatically take this to true or you can also do this uh, do it like this so you can say required true right like that right so required can have two properties one will be true and one will be false so basically if uh, in uh, any case uh, you uh, say that required is false then that will be not your uh, compulsory data right so sometimes it happens that uh, some data is not compulsory and some data is compulsory when you actually uh, log in sign up or something like that right so uh, this is uh, the kind of thing that you can do to validate a particular property right so I, what i will do is i'll just uh, change all of this data to required true right so let me just do that quickly 
all right so here i basically uh, made the creator field required and the uh, is published the field required right so now let's try and let's uh, create something so what i will say is i'll just try to create one document with just the name property and i'll uh, basically ignore creator and is published property let's see if we can create a document or are we getting any error right so uh, what i will do is i'll just go to index.js i'll open this integrated terminal i'll just close every thing that is running and let's open this and what i will do is i'll just uh, say node index.js all right so see basically what happened over here is that if we go uh, over here so you see that we have a validation error right now right and what that validation error says course validation field is published path is published is required right something like that so basically whenever you will do this you will also uh, you will see that is published is required right so basically it did not get the is published field right any value in this particular field so now it is throwing you an error now how to handle this particular error to handle this error what we can do is we can basically keep that uh, keep, we can handle that error in a try catch block right so if you do not know about try catch block i strongly recommend you to go back to the asynchronous programming model where i've talked about async await and how to handle uh, the errors with try and catch block right so here what i will do is i'll just use the try catch block and basically what i will say is i'll just uh, pick up this uh, method and i'll basically take this from here i'll paste it over here right so we'll try to uh, basically await and to save the course right and we can just console.log the result also so if it is successful the try the try block will run and if we catch any error we can just pass our error over here so we'll just say console.error and inside this we can pass the error pwr or right so now let's just try and see if we are getting the error or not so i'll just run this code again index.js and now we can see that reference error result is not defined and if we go over so we see course validation failed path is published pass is published is required right and we have this over here so if we see let's uh, try to console log the message over here right so basically there was one console.log statement over here that's why it was coming an error because it was out of this try uh, catch block so i just removed it and now you can see as soon as i uh, executed this code you can see uh, the proper uh, error message so course validation field is published path is required and uh, path creator is required right so creator and is published uh, these two properties are required over here so this is the error that is coming and after that connection is successful so basically uh, it did not create any document for us but it connected us to the uh, mongodb server right so this is how you can use try and uh, catch uh, statement try and catch block to actually handle your error right and now so we uh, in this video we talked about this particular required keyword but now there is one more method that you can use right over here i'm not talking about this required thing i'm talking about uh, this particular uh, way that we used right so what we can also do over here is we can just uh, let me just comment this out and now here i can also write course dot validate right this is an inbuilt function that we have which will do the same exact work as we were doing over here and this is also a promisified uh, method so we'll just have to write a wait over here right and now if i go over uh, again to run my server and i will just uh, clear this and i'll run again so now you will see that uh, basically the same error we are encountering right now that means our code has executed and connection is successful right so basically this will do the same job as uh, this particular uh, statement we are doing right at this particular code code was doing so you can actually use this particular uh, method as well or you can stick to the orthodox method as well right so uh, yeah so this was it right so uh, we'll be talking about more inbuilt validators that we have in mongoose so now as we have talked about the uh, required validator right required property uh, with mongoose now is the time to actually explore this a little deeply right so it has a lot of power you know 
So what we can do is we can also include one function over here and based on the condition we can return true and false and according to that we can actually create our document. Now let me show you what I mean. So basically you see that if we are uh, publishing a course right so that course is not published right so a published course will have the ratings from its audiences right from its stakers right. But if the course is not published, right, so we should not be uh, concerned about this rating property that it is there or not, right, because the course is not published, there are no actual ratings right now, right. So what we can also do over here is, we can just go over to this rating property, right, and we can basically say that your type is, will be of number, right, your type will be of number, but you are required on a specific condition. You are required on a specific condition. And that specific condition is if you are published. So what we can do is we can just return from here and we can say this dot is published, right? So what will happen over here is, okay, so let me just create one course. So I'll just create a course for MongoDB suppose, right? So MongoDB then we can go and we can name the creator so let me just uh, name a random creator and now what we can do is uh, publish date is, will be automatically taken is published let's set is published true true right this is right now true and now if i go and i try to create a course what will happen is this course is already published right this has this boolean value published so what will happen is true will be returned to this particular uh, statement right because we are using the this keyword this will refer to the particular object for which it has been created right so this will return true and then this rating will also become true the rating parameter so that will give us an error right let's see that so let me just open this with an integrated terminal i'll just say node index.js and now you see connection is successful but path rating the path rating is required that means the rating property is required right and similarly if i basically go over here and i change this to false right so then the path will not be required the rating path will not be required right so this is how you can actually use the uh, required property over here and you can include some functions and based on some uh, specific condition you can actually work around with it so now let's talk about some more uh, inbuilt validators that we have in mongodb right so for strings over here you can see that we are actually working with string and we are working with numbers so for string there are uh, specific validators over here as well right so what we can do is we can go and we can set the min length for uh, this particular uh, string so we can just say min length right so we can just write min l e n g h right length and we can set this to 5 right so whatever will happen will need minimum five letters for a course's name right then we can set the max length like this and we can set the max length to 200 something like that so the maximum length will be 200 so uh, nothing short of uh, 5 and uh, nothing uh, more than 200 right? this, this is how you can set your uh, min length max, max length right so there is a, a property uh, that we can also add we have this uh, enum property right enum means enumerated values right so what you can do with enum properties is suppose that you have a uh, basically you have a course categories over here right so let's me just say course category or let's just say category right so uh, what this category will expect is basically if you want to uh, add specific category to a particular course that means this course is uh, for web developers this is for mobile developers this is for data science this is for data structures algorithm and something like that right so what you can do is you can also set up the enum property over here so what i will do is i'll just say type and the type will be string only right the type will be string and we can set also the required property to true and here you can uh, set your enum property right enum will take an array so inside this array you can set uh, basically what all categories you need right so uh, let's uh, say that we need dsa that means data structure and algorithms right and then uh, you basically need web you need uh, mobile and you need data science something like that right so now if you go and uh, if you try to uh, create one course over here so what i will do is i'll just uh, give the category uh, something so i'll just uh, paste i'll just uh, input something in the category property so i'll just say category will be something as uh, basically let's just say database right or backend let's uh, name something like that 
right so what will happen if this particular category if this particular category that we have passed over here doesn't matches with the enum properties that we have given so it will give us a error exactly right so what you have to do you have to pass in that particular category only which has been listed in your enum right so let's pass dsa over here and now is published is true so we will also be needing the rating property so i'll just give the rating property over here a comma and let's just give a rating of 4.5 something like that right and let's just basically uh, do that so let's change this to web because mongodb is a web concept creator uh, any name is published to and now let's just run this and let's see that if we can if we are able to pass all the validators or not so this is our object uh, we are uh, successfully able to create one object that means our document and it has passed all the validation checks right so basically you can see minimum length is more than five and we have the category as web we have the creator's name we have the date we have is published and we have the ratings right so let's go to compass and let's see so now here you can see this has been created over here so this is how basically what you can do is you can use your inbuilt validators you can use this uh, required uh, property to uh, actually check uh, your uh, data that if that data is uh, correct or not right or if it's sufficient or not so this is how you can actually use validation in your mongodb or express application